that soundtrack. On the 12th. Let me sing something, man. That soundtrack. Thank you. Why are you clapping? You don't even know what's on the soundtrack yet. Let me tell you something. That soundtrack. They saw the movie, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah true, true, That true. soundtrack give, go Give the audience hard. credit, I mean. <laughs> that soundtrack go hard. There's a, there's a nine-minute song with Jay-Z and another special guest. Yeah, that. Ooh. I mean, they've been sitting through here. Give it to them, man. Why are you holding it? Why are you holding it? Hey! Why are you don't Excuse hold it. Excuse me. Get your phones out. Don't, don't, don't deprive like, the people. It's, don't. So, it's so deep. You got D'Angelo and Jay-Z on the same track. <laughs> like nine minutes, 33 seconds of absolute soulful biblical bliss. But the soundtrack's dropping soon. It's hard. Were you and D'Angelo? You and D'Angelo, Hove? A couple words on that joint? I mean, got you back in the booth. You deserve this. <laughs> you deserve it. It's like, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm gonna start telling stories that look like and resemble your experiences and your your environment. You saying it had never been done. 135 years of 135 cinema. years of the move, moving image. Hollywood has never given us a, a, a film like this where you can find us reflected in those days ever in 135 years of moving image. Not from Hollywood. We were living with this story as we were doing How Did They uh, How Did They Fall. Yeah. Like we're living with the next um, project that we're working on currently. Which go real hard. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like. It's like Monday we're talking Harder They Fall, Tuesday we're talking Book of Clarence, and then we're talking the next film, and et cetera, et cetera. So it didn't, it didn't feel like um, one stopped and another one began. Mm. It felt like one continuous, like it feels now, it feels like one continuous conversation. People yeah. ask me what it's like to work with James, and it's just like, no, it's my brother. And we just talk, and we just create, and we laugh, and we eat at my house. Yeah. <laughs> For us, these are not tough. Uh, subjects, it's like, no, accurate subject. Let's paint the picture in the correct way. Everyone was there. It's just yeah. like we, we were excluded. Like, you'll see a Western and you'll see, you know, um, you know, Asian people just, just like in either in the back, you know, doing the laundry or they own like the, the opium house. It's like, it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. Like, yeah. that's, that's not the existence of that's not it's, it's just not accurate yeah so for us to go back and like paint this picture correctly um i just was really speaking to that it's not we don't tackle tough s subjects mm -hmm. we just say we love this story this is a great story to tell and let's tell a complete full yeah. picture we say that every one of us has a walking on water moment uh, it could be um, something to do with your career, your personal life, something you thought would never happen, or something you thought you'll never get out of. If you come from the hood, you've definitely had a walking on water mm -hmm. moment. You've been in a scenario where you should not make it out of that, of that scenario. Yeah. And somehow you, you do. Or where something just magical happens to you. It's unexplainable. And life in and of itself mm -hmm. is actually unexplainable. Everyone has that that moment, but you can speak to that, Jay. Yeah, I think it's the moment where, you know, as we see Clarence's journey, he goes through a, 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 in a space where because of how he's grown up, all he believes in is what he sees in the present. That's why he says, you know, knowledge is stronger than belief. You know, I love the way mm -hmm. that turns, that turn of phrase happens in the film, because for him, Everything is in the physical. It's like everything now. You know, he's in control of everything. He got. He goes in the street. He loses the races. He sells his langham weed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like so, everything for him is tangible. He can't see past and beyond that. And his mom is sick. And you know, then he gets to this point where he has to believe in something bigger than himself. He doesn't understand or know, you know, what it is, right? But he yeah. has to. He has to believe, and he has this walk on water moment, and like. Um, and like we saying, everyone has that. You know, I've had many of them. Where it's like, or even like coincidences that you like sit around, you like, damn, I was just talking about that today and this happened and this person knew that person and you know, now this is where I am. I'm sure you've had that in your career mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, one more day and I wouldn't have been here. Mm -hmm. You know, yesterday that would have happened. You know, I had that, you know, dead presidents, three shots close range, never touch me, divine intervention. Yeah. You know, I, if someone, I mean, this is a little harsh, but I don't, uh, you know, this is my experience. If someone is this close to you and they're shooting at you and nothing touch you, 
you have to believe in something else, right? It yeah. has to be something like, what just happened here? Yeah. So in that moment, it's a metaphor for Clarence, you know, his his moment where it's like, oh, he, ha he has to believe in something else, and then the story turns. Yeah. I mean, Lakeith Stanfield, man, is... Is yeah. it's just a one of a kind. In it, you know, some people are generational talents, right? Like a one of one. And I had written Clarence, but I didn't think in any way there was anyone around that I could see. Because Clarence goes through, if you look at the story of Clarence, and you, if you check out, if you just replay the movie in your head, he runs through the entire gamut of human emotions, mm. and then emotions that we're not even confronted with yet. He runs through all of these emotions, and, and but he's a street dude, and he's cool, and he's fun, and he's he's uh, 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 confronted with life-threatening uh, circumstances, and he's like me, right? So so I didn't think there's any way I'll find someone to play this guy. It had to be him. If he said no. <laughs> Who else could have played that yeah. role? Like, if he said no, I, I wouldn't have shot the movie. We, me and Jay, we would be doing the one we're gonna do next. Now, let me tell you something, man. You need to know this. All, all filmmakers. It's almost like it's politically incorrect to not be excited about what it is you do, right? Mm. It's a crazy thing, man. Never grow up. Gr uh, maturity is. A you disease. say ob obey your crazy. Obey your crazy. For all creators, right? That which you create is for the public, for the audience, right? But the creation of it is for you. Mm. The movie we make is for the audience, but the making of the movie is for us. All you're gonna be left with is the memory of you making that movie. So for me, when I am on set, as soon as I arrive to set, I'm blasting out music from, uh, First shot to rap at the end of at the end of the day. If we're shooting lights, I'm blasting out music. My sound team are, are um, instructed to rig the entire place I'm in with wow. speakers, and so and you see how how um, unifying it is mm -hmm. when you're working with people and you're uh, you you know you 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 being able to just jam out and yeah. and just have you you allow everyone to be seen and felt. And heard. I think that you know a lot of times when people make the f make films, when magic happens is when you pass it off to someone else and they really understand your vision, right? You have to a person one use typically you know this guy writes, directs and scores, yeah. right? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But typically someone writes, another person directs, and then you give someone else to do the score, yeah. right? And when you get those things right, because now they're going through different people. You have a good movie, you know, bec because all these things are happen happening simultaneously. It's like a different experience. It's everything is just, you know, you know, the songs are being written before the film. The scenes are being shot. Mm. That doesn't happen, you know. That's why they, that's why it feels so real and so honest and so true, because it's coming from one source. It's mm. all coming from one one place, you know, and. Um, it just feels it feels it feels natural and and it's special by the way to 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 James's um, yeah. to give him his flowers like it's um it's a special thing to have someone who speaks so many different languages it's like speaking different languages mm. and he speaks you know audio as well as visual um, very well and, and very few people can do that for me the score the soundtrack and um, and the the film right. They're all, they're all the same thing. So I hear them all, you know, there's no speech without melody, right? So I hear them all as, as I'm writing, then, you, you know, I could say the line back to myself and then I could work out a character's motif and his, and his um, theme. And then I could, t t the woman he's talking to, or I could hear her melody and work out her theme and her motif. Me and Jay put together the music for The Great Gatsby, right? Uh, again, in, I think 2013. I remember you and I having a conversation at the Mercer Hotel, and we both talking about like, wow, it happens real, real late. Like the the music, the film's already shot, and yeah. all this stuff is is, is happening. And and me, yeah. you know, we're 
No, we're cooking though. And so, <laughs> so because it happens, because it happens all at once. Almost like an afterthought. Music is like an afterthought, mm. and, and music is so powerful. It's a scene, right? You yes. remember you, you remember movies based on themes, and you know you you've had you can go through that. Yeah, like like uh, if I said to, to everyone here. Dun, 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 dun. You don't even hear the song. You hear a, f you see a full movie. Dun, 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 dun. I, we can actually just. I could just give you five notes. Do 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 do. Close and cut of the, of the third kind, and the whole movie goes off in your in your head. And and I think that that composers come on too late, mm. Elliot. They come on too late. Mm -hmm. you, you for any. Filmmaker or any, the minute you know what script you want to you wanna make, you, if you don't make the music, hire a composer immediately or start speaking to your, because the, the score would even influence your camera choreography, mm. right? If wow. you know how your, your mm -hmm. like Clarence's, um, Clarence's score, it helps to where I, because the camera tells a story. And, you can't, and so everything is, everything is music. It's all, for mm. me, it's all, um, it's all one thing. So one time, Jay calls me, right? So me and Jay had spoken about it. We, we speak all the time. So it's not, it's not like we create together. We create when we're floor to the ceiling creative. So we create all the time. But really, we're sp we don't realize we're creating when we're speaking. We're just speaking. So I called Jay, and I, t I told him the, the night's over Egypt. Well, I told it to you in, in your house. Then he hits me. The, uh, he hit me a day later. Right, and you go, yo, tell me that scene again, James. I'm like you know the whole scene. I want, I want your version. Like, okay, so I, so I put the phone up. I put the phone up, and I explain to him from outside the club to the nights over Egypt scene to what happens with Barabbas outside the club. Then the running, then the commentary on like brut the brutality we face, and just as I got to the punchline, and he holds the Roman up. And says, Jay's phone dies. <laughs> now wait, wait, wait. You don't understand how much of a unusual thing this is. Nothing dies around. No battery dies around Jay Z. Nothing. If you're if you're at Jay's house and you're drinking a glass of water, and the water goes almost half down, a hand comes out <laughs> and <laughs> refills the water. You don't understand, right? It refills the water. Here's the crazy thing. If you follow the hand, there's no one attached to it. It just, <laughs> it's just in the sky. Nothing dies around Jay. It was the most, it was the most bizarre thing ever. It's the most bizarre thing I ever experienced around this. this I had to put nights over Egypt in there, man. I had to. And, and it also answers the question of like, again, we're not just sitting around like, this is what we're doing. We're working today. Yeah. It's like we're working on it in real time and sharing it with people. And you know, it's yeah. it's, mm -hmm. it's like a it's light. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It's, it's literally lifestyle. a lifestyle. It's, it's who lifestyle. we are as yeah. as creatives. Yeah. Now you never get songs that speak to the movie in the way they should. If everything is one, the songs should mean. The song should be a movie in themselves, and the, the and the only place you get that is in James Samuel films. Talk to me. <laughs> in the words of Lil Weezy, "We out here." <laughs> Clarence didn't have faith, like like many of us in growing up in Hollywood. You're given it, and then you question it. Pray to God so long, and after eight years, and. Blah, 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 blah. You know, just based on your search situations, like you day, you know, every day these things are going on. Your brother got killed, your uncle got killed. You know, it's testing your faith. You know, and you know, Clarence is young. So his faith can be tested really easily and quickly yeah. until yeah. he until he finds a reason to believe in something. You know, at some point he finds, you know, through web through whatever journey. Like People expect us to be born and understand these things. Just say, if you're not doing this exactly the way we do it, it's blasphemous. How so? A friend of mine told me a long time ago, uh, Max Newsom, his name is, he's a, he's a writer. He said, you know, James, writing is not the difficult thing. Preparing the environment in which to write is. 
like you need your your routines but we are floor to the ceiling creatives right the minute we wake up to the moment we go to sleep we're creating i've always said that everyone has their tells when you're speaking to jay he, ha he has a tell right his his brain starts making music of a scenario and that music is like business this and that but his do you, do you see jay's face start doing this when you're talking to him he starts locking in and when he locks in he go <laughs> then, then i go sorry to interrupt and he'll show you then he'll he'll tell you what the plan is right and but he would his brain would have like constructed made a constellation out of something you wouldn't have even thought was an astrological chart so to speak that's a bar Man, there you go this stuff and and because we are always um creating but i think as a creator you still need to work out your for particular things you still need to work out your your routine or your pathway to cre create a different thing and you have to be disciplined as well because you could get distracted so easy i don't love the sun right i don't love the sun because i knew that when we were living on the when we were on the i don't um experience writer's block because writer's block was luxury we couldn't afford we were writers on the block <laughs> and when we were and when we bars were, again uh, and we and when we were on the block right the only way out was either you're going to the pen or you have to go to the pen you know those ones mm -hmm. there's too many bars to say, say man so so when when the, so when the sun shines i just used to find myself wasting time you'd be on the on the on the wall and with your friends and girls and this and that and the other I, with rain it's just so beautiful to me because it just means yeah. creativity and i'll get stuff done and i'll get myself out of the hood and and i've always loved the rain more than the sun and someone asked me last week why man, you can't even hear the sun you can't hear the sun mm. you can hear the rain the rain makes music the, i love the sun by the way i appreciate it but it just means i'm wasting time kind of you know what I mean? And so you just have to work out what it is, is your you environment know. to create. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs>